In today's day and age, we might imagine that life at a medieval castle was glamorous. They were the homes of kings and lords, after all, the heart of medieval society. Well, if you aren't aware of how unpleasant realities of life in a medieval castle really was, then you might also portray it as a romanticized version in your own fantasy world. So today we're going to look into the medieval castle and just how incredibly cold and cramped life in a castle was compared to modern standards. Not to mention the complete lack of privacy and, well, nasty smells and sharing the place with a fair amount of rats. Let's get into it. Hi guys, my name is Jesper and welcome to the Fane of Fantasy. This channel is all about giving you inspiration to master your craft and create fantasy that will truly immerse your audience. It's time to follow up on the question of the week. Uh, and I was supposed to do a follow up on the one relating to uh, the top three worst jobs in the Middle Ages, but I'm sorry to say that there were no responses. I'm not sure if you don't like this question of the week initiative. Uh, if you don't, then just let me know in the comment section below and then I'll ditch it. I'll ditch the idea again then. But uh, well, the, the good news though is that there were some responses on the video before that. The, the one about the Roman engineering where I uh, asked if you think a fantasy army modeled over the Roman one is a good idea or not. It seems that you thought it was a good idea, but it was also mentioned that, that we need to remember to make them unique and not just like a copy paste. That's certainly a standpoint I can agree with. So thank you, uh, Simpa5 and Gary for sharing your thoughts. That's what I like to see you guys out there engaging and sharing your inputs and reflections on what I'm talking about in these videos. You know, it, it is to a large extent why I make these videos in the first place. You know, otherwise it's, it's just me babbling to a camera and where's the fun in that? I want us to interact with each other and uh, I'll keep these questions of the week um, up for a little while longer and then let's see if it goes better next week. All right, enough about that. Uh, imagine that you are King Pompus III and you are now about to live another day at your splendid castle where you rule the lands with a firm... <laughs> I want to say evil. Is that, is that all right? Let, let's say you firm evil fist then. <laughs> Sorry, but that's just my uh, taste coming through here. You, you got to have some evilness, right? It, it, has, it has nothing to do with this really, so just, just ignore that. Let me tell you how a typical day in King Pompous life at a medieval castle would look like. So, King Pompous. You wake at sunrise like the people in the castle do every day when the god trumpets its beginning. Of course, the servants are already up and about, ensuring that fires are lit in the kitchen and in the great hall. They are sweeping the floors and have begun preparing food. When the evil King Pompous gets too hungry, he gets grumpy and someone might just end up in a dark cell if that happens and, and we can't have that, right? So, uh, so they're preparing food. It will take a good while yet before you are going to eat though. The first meal of the day is normally served between 10 a.m. and noon. You, you get out of bed, you are entitled to the comfort of heavy blankets, feather mattresses, fur covers, and tapestries hanging on the walls to uh, block the damp and breezes. 
yet you are reminded of how dark and cold, uh, cold castles really are. You know, stone masonry, masonry is well and good for strong defense fortifications, but uh, the thick stone never gets fully warmed by the sun. You put your slippers on and walk over to the tiny window. None of the other windows are any bigger than this one, which means that only little light really enters. Well, that is going to spoil. That is not going to spoil your mood. You, you might not have eaten yet, but this evening is a celebration. Your birthday, perhaps. Uh, I, I don't know. You decide why we're celebrating. This, this apparently just became a collaboratory story, but, but okay. You, outside, you see knights practicing their skills, but for the most part, the layout of a castle is not influenced by defense, but rather domestic needs. You, of course, also have moats and gatehouses with the obligatory traps and such to demonstrate your power. You know, having a castle wasn't only to defend lands, but also to show your significance. You are King Pompus III, after all. People are busy out there, all from cooks to gardeners, uh, men attending horses, and your very important treasurer is bustling about. Uh, there are livestock and a blacksmith banging out ironwork. Children are playing before the day's lessons begins, and all around the inner ward are various uh, craftsmen. Your castle has uh, 100 to 150 people living here uh, and working, so, uh, but it, it seems you have lost count of ex the exact number, but uh, the evil king doesn't really care how many people work here. Standing there at the window, you can feel that it's time. So now comes the part that we modern people really like to keep private, but as King Pompous, you can't. You gotta use the toilet. And when it comes to sanitation, uh, things are a bit nasty. Uh, the understanding that sewage and disease are kind of linked together is something you are completely ignorant about, being a medieval person before the 1800s. Your toilet is thus not much more than a small antechamber where you take a seat on a bench with a hole in it. Feeling comfortable? Good. Your content falls into a cesspool or even directly into the moat. Good that it's not a summer day today because in the summer the stagnant water will smell horrible. The rest of the people living in the castle will not have uh, will have no real uh, privacy in the in the small toilet chambers. But uh, as the king, you are rewarded the luxury of your own room, which very commonly were placed at the top of one of the towers. Let's skip ahead before we get into further details about King Pompus' visit to the bathroom. Agree? Okay, as you leave your bedchamber, which is, in your case, is situated on the upper floor and thus called a solar, if it was next to the Great Hall, it would have been named the Great Bedchamber. The solar is intended for sleeping and your private quarters, and also includes a wardrobe. It gives you some privacy, although your personal servants are fortunate enough to stay here with you too. However, they sleep on the floor wrapped in a blanket. As you leave for the great hall, they begin sweeping the floor and uh, cleaning the place. You want your guests to enjoy their dining this evening, so uh, you are checking that all, of, uh, all is in order with, with the foods, like in all other castles, the foods cooked are generally healthy and what we today describe as organic food. But due to the risks of fire, it's prepared in a separate building, which is not out of the ordinary either. This is also where you find the areas for preserving food, 
like pantries and storerooms and stuff like that. We'll, we'll come back to that in uh, part two of this video series, but uh, more about that in a bit. Of course, herbs and spices were expensive, but, uh, but you are King Pompous the third. So I'm sure that your kitchen will hold such luxury items. Don't, don't you agree? Yeah. If you do, remember to hit the like button below. When it comes to dairy products, uh, they were popular, but uh, fruit much less so. Fruit were often smaller, tougher and less sweet than our modern versions. Pudding were, on the other hand, very popular. So I imagine that this is what your guests will have for dessert this evening. For drinks, the guest will have wine, beer and spirits. Quite customary. So the Great Hall. This is uh, primarily used for celebration and pleasures, including dances, plays and even poetry recitals. It, it's the main room. Your Great Hall is very typical with it being rectangular between one and a half and three times as long as it was wide and also higher than it was wide. It was entered through a screen uh, passage at one end and had windows on one of the long sides, including a large bay window, which was very common as well. This is also where you find the largest fireplace in the entire castle large enough to walk inside and uh, stand upright. You could count yourself lucky for having a fireplace because your father didn't have one uh, because when he lived it wasn't invented yet. It, it didn't happen until the middle of the uh, medieval period. Until this time all fires were open fires which didn't spread heat so effectively and it generated a lot of smoke. Now, you can at least produce heat for yourself and uh, your guest will be comfortable as the stones are heated. Another detail about the Great Hall that wasn't that uncommon either was a listening device system that allows you to listen on uh, conversations from your bedroom above. You won't be needing that tonight though. Uh, instead, you take a seat on a raised platform at the head of the hall, so you are positioned above everyone else. Because everyone was always seated according to their individual status. Uh, status. So if your far away cousin arrives this evening, unimportant as he is, he will be seated by the exit doors on the wooden benches at the back of the hall. That's right. And it's not even you being evil. Uh, th this is just customs. Let's uh, leave King Pompous III uh, and uh, wish him a good party. Instead, you can head over to Patreon where I have some rewards lined up for you. There, there is a link right here on the screen and uh, in the description field below. I really appreciate the support and uh, it shows that you are interested in not only keeping this uh, channel going, but also that you would like it free for any commercials. There's more to be said about castles and especially the different rooms that you may find in them. It was a symbol of the Lord's power and uh, therefore cemented the entire medieval social system firmly in place. So to conclude on this, I will uh, do a part two video next week. And I promise it will not feature King Pompous III. Perhaps he was uh, poisoned during uh, his party. <laughs> I, I actually talked about poisoning in another video if you're interested in that. Anyway, I imagine that his cousin didn't appreciate the seating plan or something like that. You know, he, he must have taken on from the evil king himself. They, they were family after all. Never mind. Let's get into uh, this week's question of the week. It goes like this. If you actually could switch places with King Pompous III and live a life in a medieval castle, would you do it? Let me know in the comment section below. You know, you can just put uh, yes or no, but uh, 
If you want to add a Y in there, that would be pretty cool too. And remember, if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe to, in order to uh, master the craft of creating immersing fantasy worlds, settings and characters. This morning I checked my Scrivener file and uh, I have reached 53,000 words on book 3 of the Keystone Bone Trilogy. That's little more than halfway, so things are going great. Although I, I have to say that life has been a little more than busy lately, so uh, it has happened twice now that I had to skip a writing session. That always makes me a little grumpy. One of them was where I had planned to uh, walk outside dictating. Uh, I, you know, I, I would create too much noise in the house if I did it inside. Uh, you know, remember that I always walk about when I dictate, so uh, I would take up a lot of space with uh, my words about dragons and sword and so forth. Anyways, so I wanted to walk outside and then it started to rain. Not just a little, but it just went on and on and on and I didn't get any writing done. It's silly to be upset, upset about the weather, I know, but I was. I hope this video gave you some insights to uh, how life was like at a medieval castle and something you can adopt in your own setting. It was not as glamorous as we think it was. And hey, if you want a free behind the scenes look at the Keystone Bone Trilogy, just click right here on the YouTube channel banner where it reads exclusive download. That will take you through to my website where you can uh, download from. Just, uh, you know, just scroll to the bottom of the page when you, uh, when you arrive. Well, thank you for watching and stay safe out there and see you next Monday.